Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Deli, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. I'd like to give a huge thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel, and if you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, you can click on the link in the description below. We'll have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and purchase your singles there or the whole deck if you so desire. If you are interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash to sign up today. So for this episode's deck tech, it's one that I'm really excited about to bring you, and it's a bit of an anomaly when it comes to how we make videos. I've actually been playing this deck for a while, but it just so happens that this commander is being reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered in the super old school border frame. It's not actually from the Time Spiral block, but it's one of those sweet includes that they've been doing. And that is Alesha who smiles at death. And what I'm really excited about for this episode in particular is it's kind of not feasible for me to be able to actually build and seriously play test and play week to week every single deck that I build and do deck techs on for the channel. We just aren't able to play enough with the circumstances in the world and that would cost a lot of money to purchase all of the different decks. But with this deck, I actually just finished it a couple of months ago, probably two months ago, and I have really enjoyed playing it. It's probably become one of my favorite decks. And so Alesha Who Smiles at Death is a legendary creature human warrior that costs two and a red. She has first strike and she has whenever Alesha Who Smiles at Death attacks, you may pay hybrid Orzov, hybrid Orzov. And if you do, you can return target creature card with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. And she is a three, two. I actually started playing magic way back in the cons block when Alesha was in standard I remember drafting her and seeing her just around and I actually always wanted to build a deck around here and that was kind of before I really knew what Commander was and honestly I'm surprised it took me so long to build this deck based off of how much I've really been enjoying playing it and I will be honest and upfront in this video this deck is since it's one of my personal decks and a lot of the cards in it are just from my collection it is fairly expensive I've got a lot of tutors and a lot of other expensive cards in the deck so this is by no means a budget deck and this is also a pretty high power deck I normally don't do deck decks like this just because I know that not everybody's playgroup enjoys playing like that with that type of budget and this type of power level but this is a fairly consistent deck that is pretty strong and does have some infinite combos. I've just played too many Aristocrats decks that just jam up the board and you get in a board stall for hours on end. I'd rather just play some combos and get it over with. So without further ado, let's dive into the strategy of this deck. A lot of Alesha decks that I've seen on EDH Rec and on other deck building websites is a lot of people tend to focus on that self mill strategy, putting cards into the graveyard that Alesha can bring back. I'm not a super huge fan of that. I kind of feel like cards that mill, cards from your library into the graveyard are ultimately pretty much dead and they don't really do a whole lot, especially with you have to attack with Alesha and spend mana to do so. I just, I think that the self mill route is a little bit inefficient. So I've got ways of filling the graveyard, but they're going to be targeted. Let's actually start off with the ramp for this deck. Not having access to green means we're relying a lot on mana rocks. So, so I've got all of the signets that we can play with Orzov, Rakdos, Boros, and Arcane. We've also got some Talismans with Talisman of Conviction, Indulgence, and Hierarchy. We've got a Soul Ring, and we also have a Smothering Tithe. So what I really like about Alesha, I'm going to be saying this a lot throughout the video, is she is a super low to the ground CMC. Three mana, super great. We just have to see one mana rock in turns one to three to get her out super early, and that's really where we want to be. The next category of this deck that is really important is the graveyard filling. So like I said earlier in the video, we're not focusing a lot on the self mill. I actually like the looting aspect and red is really good at drawing you cards at the cost of discarding cards. But in this deck, that really isn't the downside. We're wanting to fill our graveyard with cards that are more expensive than Alesha's ability lets us reanimate them for. So that's kind of a key part of the deck. So we've got Cathartic Reunion, which lets us discard two to draw three. Thrill of Possibility lets us discard one to draw two at instant speed. Faithless Looting lets us draw two, discard two, and it has flashback. Insolent Neonate lets us draw a card and discard a card at the cost of sacrificing the creature. Tormenting Voice lets us draw a card, discard two cards. Azra Oddsmaker is a really good repeatable discard outlet, so at the beginning of combat on our turn we can discard a card, and if we do we can choose a creature, and whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player this turn we get to draw two cards. And we've got Key to the City, which is another really good repeatable discard outlet. We can tap it to discard a card and give one target creature unblockable until the end of turn, which is really nice with our commander. And then whenever it becomes untapped, we can pay two generic mana to draw a card. And then we have Merchant of the Veil, which has the adventure mechanic. So if we pay one red mana, we can send it on an adventure at instant speed to discard a card and draw a card. 
And if we want to cast it as a creature or bring it from adventure as a creature, we can pay two and a red to discard a card and draw a card, and that is repeatable. So these are our discard outlets. It's really nice that they let us draw. It's it's a really nice feeling to be able to pitch the creatures that are really high costed that we want to reanimate and also be able to refill our hand. It's really efficient. So in addition to the looting effects, there are other ways that the deck has of just getting really good card advantage. So we've got Grim Harvest Specs and Midnight Reaper, which are going to give us cards whenever a creature that we control dies, which this is also an Aristocrats deck, so there will be a lot of our creatures dying. We also have Mind Blade Render, which lets us draw cards whenever our opponents are dealt by a warrior. And this deck does have a lot of warriors. Alasha is included in that. We also have Timna the Weaver, which lets us pay X life at the beginning of our post-combat main phase, where X is the number of opponents that were dealt combat damage this turn, and if we do, we get to draw X cards. This is an aggressive deck. We're going to be attacking a lot, and oftentimes multiple opponents, so drawing an extra three cards each at the end of each combat is really nice. And then this wouldn't be an Aristocrats deck without a Skull Clamp. There are tons of things that we can Skull Clamp. It basically reads, pay one mana, draw two cards for us. The next category I would like to go over is a really good setup for the combos in the deck because these combos are very typical aristocrats combos but they work really well in this deck so i'd like to just go over the aristocrat shell that i've built this deck into let me start off with the sacrifice outlets so we've got ashna Dalter that lets us sacrifice a creature to add two generic mana and then goblin bombardment lets us sacrifice a creature and it will deal one damage to target creature or player Viscera Seer and Carrion Feeder can let us sacrifice a creature at no cost at instant speed. And Altar of Dementia is going to let us sacrifice a creature to mill target player equal to that creature's power. So these cards are actually essential to the core strategy, but I will get into the combo later on in the video. So the next part of the Aristocrats package is kind of the death payoff. We've basically got all of the Blood Artist effects that I deemed efficient enough for the deck. So we've got Cruel Celebrant, Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, Mayhem Devil, and Judith the Scourge Diva. In effect, all of these creatures let us ping an opponent every time one of our creatures dies or each opponent whenever one of our creatures dies. And again, this is another key part of one of the combos in, in the deck, being able to finish everybody else off at the table. All right, now let's go over the actual combos in the deck. The first one I'd like to start off with is Anafenza Kintree Spirit and Lesser Manticore and Murderous Redcap. So this is an A plus B combo with Anafenza being the A and Lesser Manticore or Murderous Redcap being the B. And so how this works is Anafenza is going to bolster every time a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control. So what that means is whenever a creature enters a battlefield under our control, we choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures we control and we get a put a plus one plus one counter on it. So what this does is anytime that we have a persist creature die and come back with that minus one minus one counter on it as persist does and offensa will see it and it will always be the weakest creature or at least tied for being the weakest creature which means in a tie we get to choose whichever one we want and the plus one plus one counter given to the creature by an offensa will actually cancel out that minus one minus one counter what that means is the persist trigger is reset and if we sacrifice that creature it will come back with another minus one minus one counter on it to trigger anafenza again so this is an infinite loop which will provide us with infinite death triggers and depending on the setup if we have a national altar that's infinite mana if we have a goblin bombardment that's infinite damage and if we have maybe a viscera sierra an altar of dementia which will be infinite mill or a carrion feeder and one of our blood others effects that will be death for the table the other combo in the deck is a another very notorious Aristocrats combo. It is the Revelark and Karmic Guide combo. And how this works is when Karmic Guide enters the battlefield, we can return target creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. And Revelark states when it leaves the battlefield, we can return up to two target creatures with power two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. And since Karmic Guide is a 2-2, we can actually loop Revelark returning Karmic Guide and Karmic Guide returning Revelark. As long as we have a sack outlook, we can loop this infinite times. It's another A plus B combo. And Revelark can actually bring two creatures from their graveyard back to the battlefield. So maybe if an opponent has killed one of our Blood Artist effects early on in the game, or maybe one of our free sack outlets, we can actually use Revelark to get it back into play. Or if we have, you know, a way of filling our graveyard strategically with the pieces that we need, that's another way to go off really early. And again, this is where Alesha also shines, is all of these pieces that I mentioned, besides Revelark, have two power or less, which means Alesha can bring them back into play with her activated ability during the combat step, which is also super useful to the strategy. This next card isn't actually a true combo that ends the game, but it is so good in this deck, I would be very remiss if I didn't put it in, and it is the Master of Cruelties. It has first strike and death touch, and it can only attack alone, but if Alesha brings it back, it can actually attack with Alesha. 
And whenever Master of Cruelties attacks a player and isn't blocked, that player's life total becomes one and Master of Cruelties will assign no combat damage this turn. So basically, if this is in our graveyard and we are able to attack with Alesha and bring this back into play, whoever it hits, if they can't block Alesha, is just going to be dead. So it is a super powerful card and really good in this deck. And I've oftentimes been able to attack with the Master of Cruelties, kill somebody, sacrifice it to like an Ashnod's Altar or one of our other free sack outlets, and then have it back in my graveyard ready to go on the next turn. It's honestly so beautiful and evil, maybe even cruel. Okay, so with the win conditions slash combos talked about, let's go over the tutors so we kind of have an idea of what it is that we're trying to tutor for. Now we have some repeatable tutors on bodies with Imperial Recruiter and Recruiter of the Guard. Each of these are three mana and one CMC, and when Imperial Recruiter enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a creature with two power or less, reveal it, put it into our hand and shuffle our library, and Recruiter of the Guard searches for a creature based off its toughness being two or less and putting it into our hand. So either one of these can find any of our A plus B combos besides Revelark, and we can repeat it multiple times with Alesha. So if we can cast, or cast either of these recruiters and we have a sack outlet, we can attack with Alesha, sacrifice it, bring it back, and search for two cards in one turn for five mana, which is pretty good. A little telegraph to our opponents will probably be trying very difficult to kill us afterwards, but at least we're making them, you know, spend their removal and, and spend their resources to do so. Again, I know that these tutors are really expensive and the next ones I'm going to be talking about are also on the pricey end. Um, I totally understand it and I do apologize for the people that are on a budget, but I've got a Buried Alive, which lets us search for three creatures and put them into the graveyard, and in Tomb, that lets us search for our library for any card and put it into our graveyard, Demonic Tutor and Diabolic Intent, which lets us search our library for any card and put it into our hand, and Enlightened Tutor, which lets us find an artifact or enchantment and put it into our hand. With seven tutors in the deck, a bunch of card draw spells, this deck is really consistent and honestly can go off pretty early. But now let's go over the ways we have of kind of keeping our opponents at bay with the removal packages and ways we have of defending our board. So we've got Banisher Priest and Fiend Hunter, which when they enter the battlefield, we get to exile a creature our opponent's control until they leave the battlefield. Honestly, I wish Wizards would print more cards like this. I really feel like this is one of the strengths of white is being able to exile creatures and putting them on creatures' bodies. Honestly, I really like this effect. And I think the more of these that we get, especially around this 3 CMC and one to two power is just gonna make Alesha get better and better. I'm having to rely on a lot of instants and sorceries just because we're pretty low on these effects on bodies. So we've also got a generous gift, a path to exile, a swords to plowshares, a wear and tear, a boros charm, and two board wipes in Wrath of God and Citywide Bust. And then the cards that we have of kind of keeping our board intact, we've got Eerie Interlude, which lets us exile any number of target creatures that we control, and we will return them to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This is amazing in a deck that has a lot of really powerful into the battlefield triggers, can essentially give us so much value with the board being wiped and we cast this. Honestly, that sets us up really nicely to win the game. We've got a Selfless Spirit, which we can sacrifice to give all of our creatures indestructible until the end of turn. We've got a Bastion Protector, which is going to give commander creatures we control plus two plus two and indestructible and having a commander that wants to attack a lot this is just really nice to keep her alive and general's enforcer is along the same lines really useful at keeping alesha alive but it's activated ability of paying four mana to exile a card from any graveyard to make a one one human soldier if it was a creature has honestly come in handy so many times i actually kind of find it hard i found it hard to believe but it is really relevant so i really like this card in the deck We've got Grand Abolisher, which is going to stop our opponents from interacting with our board during our turn. And then with some Reanimator I've thrown in this category, we've got Victimize, which lets us return two creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield in exchange for sacrificing one. And Rally the Ancestors, which is a really interesting spell. It kind of reminds me of like Eerie Interlude. We can return each creature card with converted mana cost extra less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and we exile those creatures at the beginning of our next end step, and we exile Rally the Ancestors. This can give us a ton of value, and we can actually get around that downside of having to exile exile them by just sacrificing them to one of our free sack outlets so we actually don't get to lose those creatures from our graveyard which is super nice so that is a really nice card in the deck and then we've got a mother of runes which lets us tap to give a creature we control protection from the color of our choice until the end of turn this has so much utility in this deck we can give our master of cruelties protection from the right color to make sure that it goes unblocked or you know to give alesha protection so we can make sure that she can stay alive so we can keep on a reanimator plan and reanimating things every turn so just really useful in the deck 
And that is all the cards in the main deck. And for the mana base, I'm playing a Savai Triome, a Dragon Skull Summit, a Blood Crypt, a Command Tower, an Inspiring Vantage, Spectator Seating, Exotic Orchard, Godless Shrine, Fetid Heath, Nomad Outpost, Sacred Foundry, Battlefield Forge, Needle Verge Pathway, Caves of Koilos, Bright Climb Pathway, Temple of Silence, Isolated Chapel, Seer Step Pathway, Concealed Courtyard, and a Tainted Field for the non-basics. And for the basics, I'm playing five plains, five swamps, and four mountains. And with the mana base out of the way, that concludes this deck tech. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech. This is, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, probably one of my top three favorite decks at the moment, and I don't see it falling from that spot anytime soon. It is so much fun to play. It's I just love how consistent it is. I love how you can recover super well from a board wipe with Alesh's ability, and just the overall resilience of the deck. It is seriously so much fun to play. And just a couple quick reminders here in the close that if you are interested in purchasing this deck or any other cards in this deck tech, there will be a link in the description so you can do so. You can purchase them with our affiliate link at GameGrid. It helps out the channel and you're going to buy cards anyway, so we really appreciate that. And another reminder that if you are interested in becoming a Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash commanddeli. You will get access to our Discord, merch, extra content and a bunch of other perks it's honestly a ton of fun we have a lot of fun over at our discord so you get to play games with us every month which is honestly become one of the only times that i actually get to play commanders with our patreons so it is a blast again thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode and a huge thank you to all of our subscribers and all of our patreons really couldn't do it without you guys and i hope you have an amazing week